I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate. And today we're taking a look at Die of the Dead by Radical 8 Games. Die of the Dead is a dice action selection game in which you are going to be trying to get your souls or your dice to ascend the stairway, uh, trying to be the first player to get to the top before all other players. So it's a little bit of a race game too. Um, this is a game in which you are going to try to remember where you put your dice and how many dice you have in different coffins. Uh, so there's a little bit of a memory factor with this game as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at it on the table and then we'll come back and share our thoughts on this one. Alright, I have Die of the Dead on the table here. And let me explain to you all how this uh, dice action selection game works. You are trying to get your souls up the uh, marigold steps, which you can see there on the left side of your screen. And uh, in this game, your dice are going to be your souls. Every player has a set of dice in their player color. And you're going to be taking these four actions that affect the four Dia de Muertos caskets. And uh, you are basically trying to remember where your dice are in these caskets as three of them are going to be closed and the first one will be opened. And uh, trying to take the right actions at the right time to get your dice up these steps. Let me explain exactly what is happening in this game. So players do have their own player boards and a set of matching dice. And depending on your player order, you are going to have some dice starting on your player board as the red player does right here. And these are considered prepared souls. These are just regular souls. And uh, when you get your souls into caskets, then you are hopefully getting them to become ascended souls, which climb the marigold steps here. And on your turn, you are going to take one of the four actions that you see here underneath these caskets. And uh, the first action is to add up to three prepared souls or one free soul to this casket. And so what that means is, as I mentioned earlier, any dice that you have on your player board are prepared souls. And you can see here that you have three slots for three dice to put in there. The red player here starts off with one because they're the third player. And uh, we'll cover how you can get more prepared souls in a minute. So the red player could add in their one prepared soul, or they could add in one free soul, which is just uh, one of their dice that are here in their, their pool. And then you'll take the bottom half of the action, which says, if there are at least two players' souls in this casket, shake the casket. If a one is rolled, then move the caskets. And so you can see here that at the beginning of the game, all players have at least one soul in this first casket. So if, uh, let's say, the red player did take this action, and when they're going to add a free soul to it, we would put the cover of the coffin on, and we would shake the casket, and you might move it around a little bit like that, make some noise, and then you would reveal. And you're going to see if there are any ones. In fact, there are ones. And so in this case, we would move the caskets down one, and the casket on the far end on the right would then become the first casket. We're just going to leave them as they are right now. But that's what you would do if you took the first casket action. And exactly what you're trying to do with this is, is you're trying to remember what you've put in this casket and move it on down the line. And once it gets here, you want to make sure that you have as many of your dice as you can in that casket casket. Now the second casket here says prepare up to two souls. So this is how you can prepare souls for that first casket action. And so that would be again putting dice on your player board here. The second half of it says shake the casket, compare souls. And what that means is, is you are going to look at all the souls. So let's uh, change this up here. Let's have this casket be the casket number two. And we're going to shake it up and we're going to compare souls. And what you're doing here is you're looking at who has the highest number, which in this case is going to be the white player. They have a six. Now, in the event that let's say the red player here had a six, well, it is a tie, so you go on to who has the next highest, which would be red, because at least they have another soul, even though it's only a one. The white player does not have a second soul, and so that is how you compare souls. The winner gets to prepare a soul, and so that could even be the person who took the top action. And if a one is rolled, then you move the caskets again, regardless of which player color it is. As you can see there, we do have some ones, so we would move the caskets on down again. 
And uh, so let's do that. Let's move this casket here. And uh, we would move all of them one space over. The farthest one here would move over down the end, but we're just going to move this to right here so I can cover the next action with you all. And the third action is you can shake the casket and remove each player's duplicate souls, leaving at least one soul in the casket for each player. And so we're going to take this third casket, we're gonna shake it up, and we're going to look and see if we have any duplicate souls. Now, what exactly that means is, is you have to have two uh, dice of the same color that have the same numbers. And so in this case, we don't have any. The red player is the only one who has two dice, and they are not the same number. But if they were the same number, let's say we had two ones, then we would get to remove one of those dice because we have to at least leave one soul for that red player. And so that is a way you can thin out a player's advantage by taking the third action here. Now, you also see that you get to gain one token. So these tokens here are going to give you special abilities. Uh, you can see that sometimes they are going to uh, let you move the caskets or add prepared souls to caskets before a player takes the action. You can adjust the value of some dice. You can also get to peek in a casket and remove multiple souls if there are any. And uh, these tokens are double-sided, meaning you can flip these over and take the, uh, the B actions, which are a little more advanced. I'll leave you all to discover those when you play for yourself, but there is that option. And then um, lastly, you are going to be taking the fourth action, which the fourth action is going to be the one that allows you to advance your uh, your free, your uh, prepared souls, or your souls in the casket, excuse me, on up the marigold steps. It says here, shake the casket and compare souls, again, which is just looking to see who rolls the highest, and ascend two of the winner's souls from this casket. So they have to be in the casket. And then you, the person who takes this action, regardless if you were the winner or not, you either move the caskets, gain a power soul, or ascend one soul of your own from this casket. Now let's cover what power souls are real quick. You're going to see that there is a special board over here that contains a set of three dice in each player's color, and these dice are special as they are going to have skulls on them in the place of the three and four numbers. And so that what these skulls mean, whenever they come up, the player gets to pick what that number represents. So it's kind of a wild uh, die, and you get to have those whenever you take that bottom action there. And then ascending one of your souls. So let's cover that real quick. As I've mentioned, your whole objective in this game is to ascend the marigold steps to get to the top here. You have to start on the bottom on the first step, and you're going to take one of your dies and place them somewhere on the marigold steps. If you place right here, you gain one of the power souls. And if you place here or here, you gain one of the, the tokens, the matching tokens. If you place right here, you get to prepare a soul. Once you place one on the first step, then you're gonna go up to the second step and on up the staircase here. And the first player who makes it to the very top is going to be the winner. And that is how you play Die of the Dead. Let's go back up top and we'll share our thoughts on this game. And we're back. And now we're gonna share our thoughts on this game and tell you what a gamer and a non-gamer thinks of this. Uh, Sam, what were your first initial impressions of Die of the Dead? It's definitely an interesting looking game. It's not like anything we've played before. We don't have many games with coffins. Um, <laughs> some, not many. Um, we? <laughs> and then there's a lot of dice, a lot of a lot going on. Um, so it, it, it's a little overwhelming, but it's also very interesting. Definitely has a visual um, appeal to it for sure. Um, you know, it's got the very much uh, the the cultural theme there to it. Um, uh, you know, just a game that has awesome table presence to it, three element with the, with the stairs, you know, going up. And then you talk about those coffins too. It's, man, it really kind of, whoa, what's that? Uh, you know, um, definitely draws you in with the look of it. I, and then you mentioned, you know, it may feel a little overwhelming. And I agree with that. Even as a gamer looking at this game with all the different dice and the coffins moving and, and you know, uh, symbols. There's a, lot, there's of a symbols. lot of iconography in this game. It does take 
quite a bit to figure out exactly how everything works in this game. Um, I had to read the rule book. I had to watch a couple of other videos out there on how to play this one. And, uh, you know, still even playing through it the first time, I wasn't fully confident. I knew exactly what I was doing teaching the game. And so that's just one thing I want to say on it as a gamer. Um, not that this is a hard game no, to, it's really to not. play. It's just a lot. There's, a, there's quite a bit going on here. Um, and teaching it can be a little, of a, a little bit of a mound to climb. Um, now, so Sam, for you playing it as a non-gamer, uh, I could imagine that maybe you might have felt a little lost in what you were doing. Yeah. Was that your experience? Yeah, definitely. Just with the movement of the coffins, the um, the dice, the icons, the stairs, it, it, it did take a little while. It, it's not a difficult game. It, it wasn't... There's just a lot of questions at the beginning. Am I doing this right? Is this what I'm supposed to do? Is this what we do here? Mm -hmm. um, it's not a difficult game, though. It's just a difficult startup. I guess for me, the one thing that I really found myself asking as I was playing this game is, is how, how do I get to the point where I know I'm doing it right so that yeah. I'm winning? And, and, and what I mean by that is getting my dice up the stairway. Um, and that's really doing coffin number four. Uh, winning coffin number four, but how do I get to that point where I feel confident that I'm going to win coffin number four if I take coffin number four's action? Yeah. Um, that wasn't a very clear process on how I'm, I'm working that out because the coffins just keep moving. They constantly keep moving and then you can't see what's in those coffins. And so a lot of times I felt like, well, it, it, it's kind of just dumb luck. You know, I, I hope I have what I have, that what I think I have in there. And, and I go for it. And then sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. Because there was a, a few times when I, you know, I, I did coffin number four and it gave you the win on yeah. that to be able to go up the stairway. So, um, and I I would think, you know, as a gamer, that, that leaves a sour taste in my mouth. I don't know. What is it like yeah. for you when that happened to you well, sometimes? Well, it just kind of takes some of the control. It's, it's luck and luck-based games can be really frustrating. Yeah, yeah, a little bit so. Now, that being said, I still feel I had a good time with this yeah. game. Um, I felt like, you know, it was fun being able to have all those dice there, shaking all those dice inside the coffins. That was a unique experience. And then, um, you know, even the scoring, the way that, that you score those dice, you know, you want to have the highest dice. But not only that, but you want to have lots of those dice if there's ties. Um, and then, you know, if you do win, you want to make sure you have the dice in that coffin that you can put on the stairway. Like, those are some unique, interesting ideas behind this game. Um, it just doesn't, I don't know that it all fits together yeah. very well for me. What was, what were your thoughts? Yeah, it's just a, a lot to fit into a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just a lot. It's almost like there's two games going on. It's, okay. It's the dice and then it's the stairs. Mm. Um, I don't know. I can kind of see that, yeah, for there's, sure. There's just two different things that you need to keep your keep tabs on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and there's maybe a little bit of disconjoint there with that. And then you throw in the tokens, too. I found myself not really using the tokens too much yeah, because it, it was just another thing kind yeah. of tacked on that felt like, oh, gosh, yeah. I don't know how to work that into this. So, um, uh, you know... Unique things going on with this, has a pretty look to it, awesome table presence, just some things that really felt a little disconjointed with it. So, uh, pros and cons here, Sam. A uh, list of pros from a non-gamer's perspective. What, I, what would you say on that? It's a very interesting game. It's it's very visually it's pleasing. Um, it's unique. It's something we haven't seen before. Um, and it's a pretty quick game as well. Yeah. Um, so those would definitely be my pros. And what about cons? Um, it's just a, a little much. There's a lot going on. There's a lot to remember. There's a lot of icons. Um, it can be a little... And then there are aspects of it that are luck-based, and all of that could be a little bit frustrating to a gamer and a non-gamer. Scale of 1 to 10, love to hate. What do you give Die of the Dead? I think I'd give it a 6.2. 6.2. Okay. Um, I'm probably a little higher. I'm probably going to say a 6.7 for me. Um, I think it's a solid game, and I think there's going to be people out there that really enjoy it, um, especially for the look and the feel of it. Um, some people really like dice, and this you're going <laughs> to have a lot of dice in this game, so that's uh, going to really appeal to a lot of people. So 6.7 for me. 
Uh, would you recommend playing with non-gamers on this one? Um, I think it would need to be mixed, at least gamers and non-gamers. I wouldn't suggest just non-gamers. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Uh, and, you know, we've said it, you know, a time or two here. This is going to take a few times really kind of wrapping your mind around how you just do well in this game. And so, yeah, I think playing with non-gamers, that's going to be a, a bit of a learning curve yeah. to really kind of, you know, grasp your mind on this one. So that is Die of the Dead from Radical 8 Games. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we all love to hate where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.